Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the first episode of the Champion Video Guide. My name is Zan and this episode we'll be looking at Zack, the secret weapon. Time to introduce myself. Zack is a melee tanky champion with high mobility and excellent crowd control effects. He excels in sustaining on lane and disrupting opponents in the team fights. Although Zack is usually played in the jungle, this guide will show you how to play Zack on the top. We'll start with his abilities and work towards some more advanced tips. Note as well that all Zack's abilities except his ultimate and passive use a certain amount of current health of Zack. Also you should know that all spells from Zack scale with ability power and deal magic damage. Zack's passive is called Cell Division and it has two effects. Every time Zack uses one of his abilities and hit a champion or minion with it, Zack will chunk a little piece of himself to the ground in a random direction. If Zack walks over it, he will regain a portion of his HP back with the amount that is based on his maximum HP. Also, after Zack receives a fatal blow, he will split in four bloblets in a compass direction, two vertical and two horizontal. Bloblets can be targeted both with spell and auto attack from enemies and can be destroyed. However, if at least one of the bloblets survives, Zack will revive himself with portion based on how many bloblets has survived. Zack's Q is called Stretching Strike. Zack will extend his arms in a given direction and deal damage while slowing anyone that was hit by it. Zack's W is called Unstable Matter. Zack will explode from inside and deal damage plus the amount of opponent maximum HP to everyone around him. Zack's E is called Elastic Slingshot. Zack will prepare to launch himself to a given destination, traveling long distance, dealing damage and knocking back targets around the impact area. Note that as longer you channel, the further you will launch yourself and if you break the channeling by moving, you will be refunded with 50% of the HP that you used when you started the channel and you'll have the cooldown. Finally, Zack's ultimate is called Let's Bounce. Zack will leap in air and start to bounce. He will bounce 4 times and deal damage, knock back and slow enemies hit by it. Note that only first hit will deal full damage and knockback, the rest hit will deal 50% of the damage and won't knock back. Also Zack will receive an additional movement speed and he can activate unstable nader, his W, while bouncing. The order of maxing your abilities is pretty much simple. You start up with Q and take E on the second level cause of safety and lane from level 2 ganks. Afterwards you take your W only once and max Q first because of strong poke while taking your ultimate when available. E is max second because of additional damage and longer traveling distance. The picture will show you exactly how to take your ability, so feel free to freeze the video for a second if you wish to closely look it up. There is a two ways to build Zack on the top. First, which is used when you lane vs AD Bruiser top laner, and second, which is used when you lane vs AP top laner. Both builds are in core the same, the only difference in which order you get your core items. The start of the game should most of the time be 2 rejuvenation beats and 3 HP potions, without a ward. No, the only time you leave out the second rejuvenation beat to get a ward and additional potions is when you're dealing with a top laner with CC and jungler with CC, for example Shannon Outlaws or Jara and Jax. If you're dealing versus AD champion on lane, the first thing you wanna rush is Sunfire Escape with focusing on getting Chain West over Giant's Belt. After Sunfire Escape you should get Spirit of the Elder Wraith and Spirit Visage with focusing on getting Hextech Revolver first before Spirit Stone and also Kindle Gem before Negastron's Cloak. However, if you're dealing vs AP champion on lane, the only difference is that you rush Spirit Visage with focusing on getting Negatrons first and afterwards Spirit of the Elder Wraith and Sunfire. Afterwards the build depends on the enemy team composition. If it's made of more AD champions, take Ninja Tabi, Random Zomen and Warmog. While if it's made of more AP champions, you should go for Mercury Threads, Bulwark and Abyssal Scepter. Note that if you're dealing versus more magic damage champions, say at the beginning of the game to your supporting jungler that you're gonna go for Bulwark so they don't buy it. In a certain situation you can also buy Ionian Boots if your opponent doesn't have heavy CC and have a lot of slows. Similar to his build, I use 2 room pages but only one mastery page. If I'm versus AD top laner I run magic pen marks, flat armor seals, flat AP glyphs and HP quints. It gives me enough power to sustain the lane and a little bit of extra damage. However, if I'm vs AP top laner, I run flat armor marks, HP regeneration seals, magic resist per level glyphs and HP quints. Regardless of opponent, I always run the same masteries, taking 18 in offense, 11 in defense and 1 utility, focusing on getting extra magic penetration, cooldown reduction, ability power and increased damage in offense. HP per level, flat HP and armor and magic resisting defense and lower cooldown for flashing utility. 
I always run flash and ignite the summer spells, as they give me additional escape and that key damage to kill off my opponent laner. Now that we said most of the basic thing, it is time to show you guys some of the tricks and advices for winning your lane. Zack is a great poker and sustainer in lane and you need to use that advantage to the fullest if you wish to destroy your lane opponent. Have a enemies with Q as soon as you can and even if it's taken a certain amount of HP from you, you can still regain wasted HP by moving over Bloblet. Zack's great mobility enables you to engage and disengage from skirmishes easily or to set a great ganks or to start team fights. The easiest way to clear minions is to use the QEW combo. Open with strategic strike, charge your last screen shot for a second and land on the top of the creeps then finish the wave of creeps with unstable matter. On lane unstable matter is not the best spell to poke or to farm but you still take it only once cause of the extra blob that can heal you and for getting minions that are very low. If you're setting yourself for a gank, move to bush and try waiting for your jungler to arrive first so when he starts retreating you can land yourself with a last screenshot to knock him back towards your jungler. Zack is most certainly one of the hardest champions to gank after he hits level 6. If you don't have a ward it's fairly easy for you to disengage on first sight of incoming gank with let's bounce and a flash. If your enemies don't have a CC lock you can escape even easier by moving into bush and starting to channel elastic slingshot which will then enable you to jump much further ahead and not to waste any of other abilities. Zack's kit enables you to start up teamfights with ease. That's why early oracle in your team even if it means that you're the one that needs to buy it is one of the crucial things while playing Zack. Destroy enemy wards, move to the flank position and elastic slingshot the enemy team. The second you lane behind them start let's bounce and knock back enemy team towards your teammates. From that point you activate your unstable matter in the air and once you finish bouncing around stretching strike will enable you to slow down and elastic slingshot will enable you to chase down your enemies. Most of the time your opponent lane will try to step on your bobs and deny you the heals. Try to harass them in the process with your stretching strike. Once you get Spirit of the Elder Raid, do not hesitate to spam your abilities as you'll be healing much greater amount than your ability will be spending. Zack's kit enables you to easily disrupt enemy carries so don't hesitate in teamfights to charge on AD or AP carries, preferably on both of them. Zack's Elastic Slingshot is one of the best gap closers in the game as with your build it has only 8 seconds of cooldown and it travels very long distance. Note that you can travel across the walls with Elastic Slingshot so don't hesitate to use it to confuse your enemies with long jumps. Zack's passive is a great ability to dive your opponents, however if you take the turret aggro and die the turret will be focusing your bloblet so always try to make that at least one bloblet is outside of the turret's range. Now that we said most of the tricks that I can give you it's time to give you names of the champions that Zack is weak and strong against. From my experience the three worst enemies you can encounter on lane are Rumble, Jace and Riven. If you pick Zack top and see Rumble in enemy team Get the hell out of there. Ask your jungle for swap or at least for a heavy camp as Rumble is your worst nightmare. His shield will prevent most of your poke and his Q will deal more damage than you can put on him and heal back up. You will need at least Spirit Visage, Spirit of the Elder Raids and Nankathron's Cloak that will build in Aegis along with Mercury Threads to battle him and not lose that fight. Rumble's Q is a great poke and his ulti can easily shred your bloblets from passive to ash. If you lane versus Rumble, just try to farm and wait for ganks as you really can't do much versus him. Jace and Riven are much easier opponents than Rumble but still very strong picks. Jace has a great poke and easily disengage with his knockback. However, all you need is one good gang to get the upper hand and destroy him. Try to hang out in bush as much as you can and land Qs while he's trying to farm. If you want to engage on him, it has to be while you're in a bush to land elastic slingshot behind him and knock him even further back with your ulti. Riven is a tricky one as well. Her mechanic allows her to disrupt your charge with her stuns and she can easily close the gap while you're trying to farm and negate the damage with her dash slash shield. Beware as both Jace and Riven can easily crush your passive. Jace with EQ combo and then transfer to hammer stance and QW combo while Riven's QW combo will decimate her bloblets. Zek excel best versus these champions, Shen, Malphite, Nasus and Wukong. All other champions are fairly easy to beat but yet more difficult than those four stated before and very easier than Rumble, Jace and Riven. Well that'll be all for this episode of CVG series. I truly hope you enjoyed in my champion with a guide and that I somehow helped you. Any other questions that you might have will be answered in the comment section or on the forum. If you like the CVG please drop a like and feel free to comment if you tried the build and let me know how did it go.
Note that it takes a little practice to fully deliver and adopt this build. Also, I'd like you to recommend me if you want me to make a written guide on one of the most popular signs or not. The next episode will be out in a week and I hope you'll check it out as well. Until the next time, keep calm and crush the solo queue.